inspiration and auspitation. Now, when you're inspecting, it is good enough for you to stand on the right side of the patient. If you're standing on the right side of the patient, we are good with it. So what have you got to note when you're standing on the right side of the patient? Number one, the shape and symmetry of the abdomen and the uterus, any abdominal distension, the presence of stria gravidarum. So stria gravidarum are those marks which are called stack marks in the slang term, but these are those marks which are produced by the stretching of the abdominal skin and these are called stria gravidarum. When the patient has delivered and you examine the patient, these the same scars are called stria albicans. So you look for stria gravidarum, you look from Lena diagram, which is the mid, in the mid portion of the abdomen, there is this line which is going up from the pubic surface to the defi sternum, which is darkish in color, it is called Lena nigra. Then previous operative scar, so because the patient's underclothes are just at the level of the pubic surface, so you have to make sure that you look at the transfer scar of cesarean section. And any visible CT movement that you have to talk about. Then in examination, if you look at it, there are actually, I would say that there are two parts of the examination. The first part is measuring of the symphysiofundal height. And for that, the tape measure should be in a fashion that you're not able to see the centimeter size. So you have to mark two points of the patient's abdomen. The first point is when you palpate from the zephy sternum and you start going down, you find the fundal height or the highest point of the fundus. That highest point of the fundus is point A. And the pubic symphysis, which is a fixed point, is point B. So you have to measure between point A and point B, but the measuring tape should be placed on the abdomen in a fashion in which the inches side shows from above. So once you have taken the measure, then you remove the measuring tape and look at the centimeter side and document your uh, fundal height in centimeters. Then the second part of the palpation is the four obstetrical maneuvers, which are called the Leopold's maneuvers. So we are going to do the four maneuvers one by one. And for the first three maneuvers, you have to face the face of the patient. And for the fourth maneuver, you have to face the feet of the patient. So the first maneuver is called the funky grip. Although it is not showing in these three diagrams that I couldn't find an appropriate diagram for you, but basically if the, you take your hands further up on both sides of the fundus, this is basically the fundus grip. So place both hands over the fundus and feel what you feel inside. So if you feel a hard, rounded object, that is the fetal head. But if you feel a triangular, soft area, that is the fetal button. So funky grip basically tells you what is lying in the fundus. And in a cephalic presentation, what would be lying in the fundus? It would be the buttocks which would be lying in the fundus. Then the second is the lateral grip. So in the lateral grip, you place one hand on the abdomen on the side and you palpate with the other hand. And once you have done that, then you use the other hand to place it firmly on the side and palpate with the opposite hand. What is the objective of lateral palpation? The objective of lateral grip or lateral palpation is to confirm the lie of the baby, to access where is the back. So over here, if you look at it, the back is on the left side. So to find out where is the back and the back will appear as a smooth area while where the fetal parts are palpable they will appear as small nodular portion so the limbs would be felt on the other side so the back the side of the back the amount of light the estimated weight of the baby this is the information that you're going to get when you do the lateral then again facing the face of the patient you take your both hands down on the area of the pelvis and you feel what do you feel in both portions it is done in the same way as you do the fungi grip but you do it at the pelvic region if you feel the rounded structure over here it is the fetal head so the presentation is cephalic and if you feel soft portions over here then the presentation is uh, basically buttocks are presenting and it's a beach presentation so pollux grip is basically meant to reconfirm or confirm the presentation of the baby and the last one is the pelvic grip for pelvic grip, the important thing to remember is that in the pelvic grip, you are going to face the feet of the patient. You place both hands on the side as you did previously. But what is the important thing over here that you're doing is, number one, you're confirming the position of the head. Number two, the attitude of the fetal head. And number three, the engagement. So if you look at this diagram, this is showing you a non-engaged head, which means when you do a pelvic grip, you will see the whole head above the pubic surfaces. But as the head starts engaging, the head starts going down into the pelvis and we count it 5 by 5, 3 by 5, 0 by 5 accordingly. 
So 2 by 5 basically means that two-fifths of the portion of the head is still not engaged, but the rest of it is engaged. And this is actually called a engaged head. So when we say that the fetal head is engaged, you feel either two-fifths of the fetal head or nothing. And all of these in, are included in the engagement of the head. So this is an information which you need to see. And if the whole head is felt above the pubic surface, it means that it is 5 by 5 palpable, which means it is a non-engaged head. Now, the last component of the examination. And the last component of the examination is auscultation. So if you look at the bottom of the slide, there are three ways by which you can auscultate. You can do it by a fetoscope, you can do it by a stethoscope, and you, you can do it by a sonic gate. So if you look at it, basically I'm going to talk about the fetoscope and with the uh, stethoscope also you can feel, but our preferred method is the fetoscope. So you have to do three things while auscultation. In the last method, when we were talking about the lateral grip, I told you that we are going to identify the fetal back. So the fetal heart is generally towards the fetal back. So if the fetal back on, is on the left side and it is a cephalic presentation, then you put the fetoscope on the left side of the maternal abdomen, just a little bit below the umbilicus in a cephalic presentation and above the umbilicus in a breech presentation. So you put the fetoscope over there and you have to do two more things. One is you have to count the fetal heart rate. So you take out your watch and look while you're placing the fetoscope on the maternal abdomen, you look at the watch, but you remove this hand and put this hand on the maternal pulse. So if the heartbeat and the maternal pulse are synchronous with each other, it means that there is what you're hearing is not a fetal heart, it is the maternal pulse. So that is why you need to palpate the maternal pulse at the same time as you hear the fetal heart, because that will tell you they have to be different. And the second thing, your watch is there because you have come the fetal heart for at least one minute. Now we come to the end of the presentation and I would just like to tell you that there are still a few things left for you to do. And these few things are basically what are you going to do after the procedure or after the abdominal examination. So after the examination, you have to cover the patient. You have to remove her drapes. You have to politely thank her for letting her examine, uh, letting you examine her. You have to document the findings and you have to inform the patient of the findings. I think that this post-procedural steps are also extremely important. So when you are with us in an OSPE examination and we are asking you to do an abdominal examination, you may do the correct steps, but it is very important to do the pre- and post-procedural instructions as well. So you have to cover, remove the drapes, thank the patient, document, and then inform the findings of, inform the findings of your examination to your patient. Now, we have developed a small clip for you for abdominal examination. It is small, it is short, and it might have some mistakes. So bear with us because it's the first time and one of our doctors has uh, done this for, demonstrated this for you. So let's see. Uh, dear student, assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Shaila. I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate the video of uh, uh, abdominal obstetrical examination. First of all, there are some pre there is a significance of this obstetrical examination, abdominal obstetrical examination, as by this examination we can correlate uh, the fundal height, the piso fundal height, with the gestational age to uh, early diagnosis for or for the early detection of intrauterine growth retardation, as well as macrosomia, amount of lichen either it is increased or decreased, as well as estimated fetal weight to uh, at the uh, term. And between 38, uh, between uh, 38, 39, or 40 weeks, to uh, uh, rule out any relative contraindication for or the optional contraindication for normal vaginal delivery. So, obstetric examination is very important uh, regarding the patient point of view as well as baby's point of view. There are some prerequisites which are required for obstetric examination. Uh, first of all, uh, I uh, the, the candidate or the doctor should introduce your introduce yourself to the patient and the level of experience as well as greet the patient, take a verbal consent, reassure the patient and instruct, uh, to, inf uh, instruct to inform if she feels pain, bladder should be empty and patient privacy should be uh, respected. And uh, the things that should be uh, on the trolley uh, will be uh, uh, inches tape, gloves, draw sheets, hand sanitizer along with that of gloves due to this COVID. Uh, 19 and uh, the fetoscope. 
wash your hand or sanitize your hand before uh, to perform the examination uh, so the first of all i will uh, uh, demonstrate what position for the obstetric examination should be it should be semi recumbent position with the some wedge on the below the upper right buttock of the patient then uh, uh, stand on the right side of the uh, of the patient so i am going to start the abdominal examination assalamu alaikum mera naam dr shaila main is ke gasa se nani ke shobhe se munsli hu maine aapko pet ka maina kar diya hai jisme main bachche ki pani bachche ki growth bachche ka wazan sara kuch samne check kar raha hu theek hai aapko kahi pe dard to nahi hai agar aapko dard mehsoos ho to aapne foran foran batane hai ki jo yahan pe dard hota hai theek hai hum aapko puri tarah cover rakhenge main maina kar sakti hu ji aapne urine ka pass kiya hai
uh, it is free floating head uh, it is not engaged yet because it's preterm baby so by this uh, grip i can by this grip i can find out the attitude of neck as well as uh, number of fifth palpable uh, either the uh, head is engaged or not or i can find out the uh, presentation as well after the palpation i will go for auscultation for the auscultation we will use this fetoscope i will put my hand uh, on the maternal pulse and as I'll, i have already find out the back of the baby is on the right side i will put the fetoscope and put put my three fingers on the maternal pulse and will see the patient's face and also observe the patient face to see any kind of pain or uh, and uh, i will calculate the fetal heart for full 1 minute after the fetal heart rate should be in the range of 110 to 150 beats per minute if it is less than it's bradycardia at more than 150 is tachycardia so more than 160 is tachycardia after the examination i will thank you so much of me and myself in the corporate care i will cover the patient right now like abdominal so this is piso fundal height is 30 cm with longitudinal lie and cephalic presentation estimated fetal weight is around 1.5 kg like it seems to be clinically adequate 1 to 1.5 kg like it seems to be and fetal heart rate is 150 uh, beats per minute thank you sir. okay so let's come to the checklist of the abdominal examination so the first thing is that you need to have the required instruments or whatever you need in place so you need to have a measuring tape you need to have two dry sheets you need to have uh, a fetoscope with you and a watch so these are your instruments and things that are required then the prerequisite should be met that we have talked about bladder should be empty consent of the patient should be taken the position should be appropriate you expose under the cover and then you perform your most important steps of the examination which are inspection palpation and auscultation after you have done that you cover the patient you say thank you you document what you have seen and you inform the patient of what the findings are So we are done with what we wanted to do today. I am open for questions. So if any one of you wants to ask any question, I am here. Uh, uh, आपने जो स्टेटोस्कोप की पोजीशन बताई है वो रिपीट कर दें वो कहाँ पे रखना है? So what I said was that when you do palpation and you feel the fetal back, most of the times the fetal back is on the left side. So when you palpate and you find that the fetal back is on the left side. and it is a cephalic presentation then you take umbilicus as the center to aapne jo fetoscope rakhna hai that is to the left of the umbilicus maternal umbilicus to the left of it and below so for a cephalic presentation when the head is uh, when the back is on the left side you put your fetoscope below and to the left of the umbilicus right and if the back is on the right side then you do it below and to the right side of the umbilicus थैंक यू मैम और कुछ आई एम श्योर कि ये वो नहीं कर सकता जो कि अगर आप एक्चुअल लाइव डेमोस्ट्रेशन में देख रहे हो लेकिन मेरा ये ख्याल था कि योर टाइम इज सो प्रेशियस तो हम लोग थोड़ा सा अगर यही करा दें तो थोड़ी बहुत ओरिएंटेशन हो जाएगी एंड होपफुली व्हेन वी गेट यू बैक इनटू द क्लास वी विल बी एबल टू डू इट लाइव एज वेल और कोई चीज सारे सो रहे हैं मैम ये लेक्चर कॉलेज के यूट्यूब